Cristo. segment. This is volume five. First Evie Moore's video, volume five, being recorded right now on a TDK piece of video tape. I'm Colonel RSN for your perusal. We've entered the Bloody Mary stage of our theater here. I don't know quite what to say. What's the sound of this like? Who gives a shit about the sound? The taste is where it's at. Anyway, my mother-in-law came to me. <clears throat> she said, R, how long do you think you're going to be able to keep this video diary going? Well, I answered, as soon as I finish <clears throat> recording the Lost Lennon tapes tonight, I'll call you back and let you know. She said, I don't have time for that kind of thing. Henry has to take me to work. And you know what work means to paying for the roof over your head. I said, okay, I understand. I'm where you're at, so to speak. <coughs> so I went to work for her the following day filled in, punched in, did all the typical kinds of things, mainly cashiered. And that's when things changed. For the better. I'm still unsure though whether I can fulfill the shoes that she left.
to pay, find out who you are. Overdid it and mailed the people 17 songs, each a true masterpiece. I figure I ought to show up all those other communist composers up there in the east. They called me a week later and said, Hey, boy, you really got something there. They said, we need your kind all the time, so just sit down in the chair. New talent needed all the time. New talent needed all the time. They looked at me in my clownish appearance and told me to go home. I told them, I didn't want to, but I was better than Billy Bragg. And these execs laughed and said I was right. Told me to go home. Here. I demanded my quarterback, and they gave me Johnny United. Matic win of the year this afternoon. They scored five runs in the bottom of the ninth inning to beat Oakland seven to six. This on the heels of winning the ninth inning last night as well. And the Tigers lost again. The Yankees suddenly just four games out. Top of the ninth inning, Jose Canseco hits one off the facing of the upper deck, his 33rd to lead the majors. Scott Nielsen yielded it, six to two A's. But Ken Phelps, bottom of the ninth inning, drills a three-run homer to left center. That cuts it to six to five off Dennis Eckersley. Then six to six, Ricky Henderson up. Ground ball goes off Tony Phillips at third into left field. Luis Aguayo scores, and the Yankees, with five in the bottom of the ninth inning, come back and win it seven to six. Oh, it was a great win for us, and uh, I think we made two steps the last couple of nights of uh, hopefully a, a positive road for us. I think it's a very important road trip for us. Uh, it's important that we play well going out to the West Coast. Um, you know, I think uh, we can't afford really to, to play poorly on this road trip. And they are in Milwaukee starting tomorrow afternoon for one game. That's a makeup game then to the West Coast. These are putting something together, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I hope so. I mean, they got a little ways to go, but they got a little spark moving right now. Yanks flying high tonight. Second straight ninth inning thriller this afternoon at the stadium. This one even better than last night's. Bombers score five times in the ninth to overcome a 6-2 Oakland lead. And that just does not happen every day. Scott Nielsen on in relief at John Candelaria. Only bad pitch here. Go for ball to Jose Canseco. Major League leading 33rd home gives Oakland a 6-2 lead. Jose does a little bashing for most of the fans. Time to hit the parking lot. But frustrating day. Mike Pagliarulo taking out in the water cooler. Do it, Pegs. Do it. Sometimes you just snap, you know. <laughs> There's no reason for it. I don't know. You know, I just felt that I wanted to hit so bad in the situation I didn't. But uh, <laughs> I snapped. Well, relief for Pags in the New York Knights. Getty Phelps, two on, pokes one to center field, just keeps on going. And suddenly, it's a 6-5 game. The Yanks tied up on Don Slott's double play ball, and then two outs. Ricky Henderson against Gene Nelson. Hot shot left side, Tony Phillips can't handle it. And in with the game winner, Luis Aguayo. 7-6 Yanks. What a win. The question now, can they take this momentum and run with it?
I said last night we need to crawl a little bit before we get walking again, and uh, you know we've taken a couple of little, uh, couple of movements these last these last couple of days, and hopefully we can take this into the road trip and uh, and play well. It's a good come from behind win, the best one we've had uh, all year. Good come from behind win, the best one we've had uh, all year.
great being aboard this TWA jet on my way to Jamaica to try to find A, U, and B. What the hell gay means? Y'all don't get me cutting it. Ain't nobody ever really photographed me cutting into a box. Most time they try, it's just a blur. Am I, am I ugly or what? Oh, look at my face. Boy, you're not looking good? Oh, God, look at the lines in it. That's the first thing I said when I saw my son. What, what, have, oh, you, what have you been doing to your face? My God, look at it. Jesus, save Christ, my face is... Oh, man. Look it up here, look, look, look. All the way over, and over here. I got these marks, these indent... It's like beyond crow's feet. And look, it looks like a pelican. Walked on my face, look at the holes. Jesus, I hate my skin. It's awful. I wish I could just, I, I, I just pull it off. American Top 40. <laughs> 
I got one for you, Mr. Rushing. <laughs> I heard on TV the other night, this 102-year-old woman was in the nursing home and the reporter went to see her. And uh, he's asking her, said, you never been sick? She said, no, I've never been sick a day in my life. He said, well, have you ever been bedridden? She said, all hundreds of times, twice in the buggy. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
it could cross a watermelon patch with a wheelbarrow. And then what would you use? A watermelon patch with a wheelbarrow? Yeah. What do you get? Get a load of buckshot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we, we gotta go. <laughs> News got out in several days, it reached me on the first. to me, Nick Tortuna. And now our Montclair travelogue. What is this in front of us? Earth, Wind and Fire 10? Well, this is a special license plate for people who have a lot of money. Every motherfucker 10. That's right. Which is who he's got all of his money There from. we go. There we go. There's two ladies waiting for bingo. Waiting for bingo, ladies? How you doing? Always polite to make sure 
sure everybody in the neighborhood knows who you are. Tell us where we are. We're right now on Valley Road in Upper Montclair, New Jersey. And we're headed... Uh, we're heading towards Montclair, New Jersey. Which direction would you say? Uh, we're, we're more than likely now heading in an south I was hoping direction. you'd say that. This is a park. Over here is a pole. Is that as loud as your stereo gets? Ah, oh, I like the sound of that. Watch me dance. Is. Look at this car here. I missed it. Fat rich man with some troubles there. How do you know? Did you see his wallet? Yep. Yeah. It's represented in what he drives. We're not quite going due south at the moment, are we? Now we're heading due east. You drive careful now. Where? Dallas Fort Worth? Look, many trees I are missed that branches. too. I missed that too. All along the sides of the road, there'll be trees, branches. Yes. Because <laughs> of a tremendous storm we had here the other night. Hurricane Ooh. statue. The Chris the Storm Chris? That's right, Hurricane Chris O. Blew down our trees everywhere. What happened? A gust of wind came. Must have been. And blew our trees away. Must have been. Branches down. Caused all kinds of havoc and mayhem. There's one of our seven video shops in the area. You want to stop? I don't mean... No, I already have enough video equipment at home. Thank you. Got a weird little thing dangling from your mirror. <laughs> what about this little thing? Now, why did they here? make these boys pose on the front with a silly old dollhouse? Because that's a great record, isn't it? That's DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince doing a touch of jazz from their album called Rock the House on Jive Records, which is now distributed by uh, RCA. Remember, it used to be in the Arista household, but uh, I don't know how they let it slip away. DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. It's called The Touch of Jazz. It didn't sound like jazz to me, Nick. Well, what the title was inferring was a touch of jazz, which was uh, basically... Yeah, yeah. Just little smatterings, you know, pieces of music. Uh, a horn here, a drum there, a piano there, little Buddy Rich, Miles Davis. You know what I'm saying? Excellent. Like due east? Well, we're down Bloomfield Avenue now. Nice. The heart of Montclair. This is our shopping district. On the right, we have the Krabby Lobster, but on the left, we have Crazy Rhythms. Home of our Stevie Moore. He lives there, yeah. Popular jazz and classical recordings. Right next door, we have yesterday's books and records. What about today? Well, anything that isn't sold in Crazy Rhythms ends up next door. And then if they still can't get rid of it, Steve takes it all. It's a wonderful day here in the town of Moscow. It's really lovely. Electric sunshine. Blue skies with an occasional puffy cloud or two. Look at all these nice cars. So many. So many beautiful European cars. A lot of imports here. Yellow. Green. Now we're going to some classic sounds of the air. Yeah, get a shot of these people waiting for the Keep bus. This in your heart to hurt me.
What do you got against Pennsylvania, my man? Here's the hot dog lady. How are you today? <laughs> She's uh, got a hot dog up her ass. We're making a right turn here. This is Elm Street. Now we're in Idaho. Homes of Nightmare. Looks like any other street to me. There's the Arbor Gate Condominium Project. Where? Can't see it on the camera. I thought I'd point it out anyway. Well, it's a beautiful day. Couldn't ask for better weather for Look at that sky. I'm extremely happy that we decided to pick today. There's no humidity. Look out. Ooh. One of the, easily one of the 10 best days of the year. Of course, I'd have to consult Dr. Bob Harris about that and find out. Who's that? He's our local meteorologist. And he Here on Elm Street? Yep. Oh, he lives yep. at 74. No, he's on Channel 2 nightly. We'll see him later? Mm, not this evening. Dr. Bob is on vacation. And I say Dr. Bob, even though he isn't a doctor, he just found out that he was lying. Where are we, where, where, what's happening? Where are we going? Whoa, look at this castle. This we is can't the go in there. Castle. We can't go in there. Built in the 1920s, one of the only stone structures on Elm Street. Originally, one family occupied this whole house. And right here is where you live? Right, and we're going right into my room right now. And there we are. Ah. But, I forgot, I have to let you out. One, two, three, four. There's nowhere to avoid dust. There's no getting around it. Uh, it's everywhere, and it continues to come. You clean, and it comes back. This brings to mind a story how we in the modern age are 
you and me in the 80s are like particles of dust. I don't believe that. I've said it. The words are, I guess they're in the past. Anyway, the thing is, if you think too long about the things you say, you'll find you get confused. You try to concentrate on the words as they slip away, and you don't really have time to think about what you're going to say in the future. So let's not dwell on the past. Like particles of dust, it's a waste of time. No one notices them. You don't want to be... Uh, Did you just see that? Oh, you can't see it. It looks like, um, what's that guy's name? Jeez. Um. <laughs> Another tear. Cut. <laughs> we try it from there. Go. Oh. Speed. It's like... Oh my god, we haven't been recording all this time. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Hello, baby. Yeah, this is our Stevie speaking. <laughs> oh, you sweet thing. Do I what? Will I what? Oh, baby, you know what I like. He lays and a pretty face and a ponytail hanging down a wiggle in the wall. This is Frank Jones in the Monument Recording Studios in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm delighted to welcome as our guest Monument Recording star... Insert your name here. 
Steve Moore. First, let me say how delighted all of us in the Nashville music industry are to see you receive the recognition as a recording star in your own right. And I know, too, that your fans throughout the country are equally as delighted. You know, perhaps what is not known to your fans and not known to many people is that you've been heard on so many recordings in the past backing up the greatest stars in the recording industry. Well, no, Frank, I think you're mistaken. That honor belongs to my dad, Bobby. Although I do try to do as many sessions as possible, actually I wish they'd start hiring me instead of Dad. I get behind, you know, and yet I have been heard on literally thousands of my own productions. But you couldn't call them big stars, besides myself. You know, you've received a great many compliments and tributes from not only our Music City USA Nashville recording artists, but artists from around virtually the world who have come here to record. And I know that... Uh, when they speak of you and your accomplishments and your talents, they are most generous and rightfully so. Would you have any idea, before you became the Monument Record star, of how many sessions you assisted with other stars? I don't know. I don't really care either. <laughs> no, seriously, I have assisted on about two or three hundred actual Nashville recording sessions. Now, that doesn't count, as I said, many, many home tapes, which I have either played guitar, produced, or performed as the Monument Recording star I am today. I'm quite good, too. Let's pause again for a moment and play another excerpt from your Monument album. Okay. Could you recall, perhaps, if this was the case, and also, perhaps, you could tell us a little of your first recording work? Sure. I've been watching VU meters move now for about 10 years. I began at my parents' home in Madison, Tennessee, writing little songs and learning how to disregard other musicians. By that I mean I am a self-taught overdubist where I can play every instrument and sing every voice part myself without relying upon another's lack of inspiration. You know, it's a well-kept secret that no one else in Nashville can really do a damn thing right. That's why I'm so big. And here's another record that you appear on, this time as lead guitarist for the Manhattans. This was a session I did for the late Chuck Sagal a couple years ago, Frank. Here's Teenage Liberation. <laughs> use the word hectic, what with all the sessions you are playing on, and of course your own career. Is there any uh, particular hobby that you like to pursue, perhaps any special interest that you may have? Well, music is it, right? I also enjoy uh, casual marijuana smoking, kinky sex and masturbation. masturbation. I uh, paint and draw occasionally. I'm very interested in collecting records and magazines. I watch a little TV. I'm a very indoorsy person. Can't stand sports or politics or people, really. Getting back to your musical career, now that you are successfully launched as a name recording artist, will this change any of your previous activity? In other words, will you still work studio sessions, let's say, with other artists that are recording, or will anything change now? Maybe and maybe not. If I'm not sleepy, I will do sessions for others, preferably rock. Actually, I need all the work I can get. Monument hasn't paid me a cent yet. I will continue, though, to write, record, arrange, and produce my own special style of whatever it is I do so well. Let me ask you something. You obviously have found a very successful formula in your recording style. Is there anything you would like to change on your technique, or let's say something you might like to do differently in the future? I would very much like a metronome, as my sense of rhythm is very scattered. And by being a totally solo performer, I have so much more responsibility to my followers. I also have an ambition to release a new album every week for the rest of my life. Now, I've heard of overexposure, but this is ridiculous. Actually, Frank, I just want to be rich. What else is there? And listen to another excerpt from your Monument album entitled... Thank you for coming on so strong. 
It is always a pleasure to see you, and may I wish you continued success. Thanks a lot, Frank. I do my best. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is being together Two is sweet Two is you and another Someone having fun 